Welcome. Welcome to yet another scintillating edition of But, but that's, that's Not Important. That's Not right now. Important Right Now. The no. show where no. you get to win all sorts of cool prizes and stuff. No, not, not really. It's, it's not that kind of a show. It's a podcast involving two weird individuals, namely Ian Reed and Jared Butts. That's me. Yeah. Do you know Transformers the movie? Are we talking, are we referring to the 1986 animated version? We are. Oh, Do well, it. no, we don't can. That right. is movie. That's movie father. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was reminded of, of this recently. Um, yes. They used to show it on ABM religiously. They did. Yeah. yeah Thank God. You know. <laughs> um, but. Um, How to structure the cast. Where Al had yeah. a voice rule on it. Was it Weird Did Al had a voice rule on it? Was it Weird Al, really? I, I remember that. He had yeah. a song, uh, Dare to be Stupid, right? Dare, that right. Was a song, I, right. Yes, right? I remember that. But, yeah. but the, the scene where they land at the junk planet and all the junkions or the people on the junk planet, you know, they speak in this weird kind of way. And the main guy, the main junk guy, oh no, Eric Idol, Eric Idol, Eric Idol, yeah. Yeah. Eric Idol from Monty Python fame. He right. was, he was the lead, the, the, the leader, right? the lead junk man. You know, and there's a scene where they're fighting Unicron, the big body in the end, and they say, "Destroy Unicron, eliminate even the toughest things." <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> Satisfaction guaranteed, and then all of them go, All your money back. <laughs> that's what reminded me when you said that because when you said that in the beginning, that's what yeah. they, 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 they talked in talk TV, they, they call it talk TV, but it really was talking, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, taglines and 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 strap lines and ads, you're using you know, taglines and from ads or. Know? Cobbled from cobbled from particular ads or from from way yeah. back when, yeah. Which yeah. is which is something that somebody reminded me recently. He said that do you you know, and this was in another movie called Explorers. Um, yes, I remember Explorers. Right? I remember they Explorers. Met these, they met these aliens, and the aliens yes. turned out to be these kids. And the aliens thought what they were watching on TV, these sixties, fifties, forties movies, were what were, 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 what was going on 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 Earth? You know, they thought that was real. You know, yes. and it's all these B movie monster movies and and alien movies and so on. Right. You know, and 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 the idea is is that alien life, if they have heard us, they have heard <laughs> world mm. rules. You see. <laughs> Okay. The broadcast of all the world. So, so somebody said, I don't really want to live here. <laughs> I don't want to go to at all. You know? And then yeah. I said, well, they, they, they heard soccer. <laughs> oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. Well, let's put it this way. Today's soccer is, is, is junk more than anything. That's just my opinion. Today's mm -hmm. soccer is just junk. Most of it is junk. Uh, the, 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 the soca that I grew up listening to, the soca from the, from the late 70s, 80s, and, and even, into the, even into the early 90s, that for me is, is great stuff. Yeah. And there's never been, and I don't think, I, I think and, and you see, the thing about it is from a, from a cultural perspective, we started to hit our zenith sometime in the early to mid-1970s, late-1970s, and then from the 1980s, the quality, the overall quality of the music started yeah. to diminish. Not by much, but it yeah. started to diminish. Yeah. And by, I would argue that by the late 1990s, what happened was that the soca that I grew up listening to was hijacked in such a way that it had a heavy Jamaican influence. 
Yeah. And that's something that people do not want to talk about because yeah. to say that is to admit that we were bereft of any sort of ideas. And from, from the late nineties, I would say un, up until my God, for, for the next 20 years from the late 1990s, right up until, un, until the, the 2010s, the music that we were listening to was just a hybrid of, of, of straight out noise and Jamaican dance hall music. Yeah. And I would die yeah. on, I'm, I'm prepared to die on that hill. I, I would agree with you, but I won't agree with you. But before before we mm-hmm. go any further, um, yeah. I'm here to read it, and this is Jared Butts. Yes. And we, we used to work in advertising. Used to. We both share uh, a passion for not just the movies and entertainment, which is, you know, the thing. Everybody talks about that. We also yeah, everybody share, talks about that. Uh, we also share uh, a fair amount of 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 nostalgia for music, you know, good music. Um, yeah. I mean, nowadays, I mean, you posted something a couple of weeks ago or last month saying that there is good music out there. Here's a sample of it. And I thought that was great because I've never heard mm-hmm. that song before. You know, it's not mainstream or whatever. And no, I like that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, and then, sure. like, anyway, well, we talk, we used to work in advertising. So we started this podcast in the middle of the pandemic because we wanted to try to tell stories. Uh, and we, we have people coming in to listen to us. And we also, now they're starting to relate their own stories and people come on and relate their own stories. We've had a lot of guests come on and talk about stuff. Um, but what, what, is, what is happening now is that we're moving into a new kind of, new kind of, of not format, but a new thing where we're talking less advertising and more how advertising has affected us as a society, has affected us as a personality, how it shapes our thinking. Because in the last couple of episodes, it has become very apparent that as a social engineering tool, advertising has always been that thing. You know, it has always been part of, well, not a, just a reflection of the society, but also shapes the society in some way. And one of the things I wanted to, to, the reason why I want to say that is because coming off of what we said, just said about this change in musical style, is that I remember when the telecommunications people did, it was Lansdale that did it, Lansdale, Sachi, and Sachi, when mm. they did their ad campaign for Call First. Right. They used Beanie Man. Was it Beanie Man? Was Did it they? Man? No. Was it? No. Who was it? You mean call first whenever you no. want. Who was the guy that was, in the ad? That was General Grant, dude. General it? Grant. Sorry. My bad. General Grant. I keep thinking Beanie <laughs> Man is General Grant. I'm sorry. My bad. It's been a while. It's been a while. My bad. It's been a while. Okay. So General Grant is a Jamaican dancer person. He's Trinidadian. Right? Isn't he Trinidad? He's Jamaican. He's Trinidadian. Trini, he's Trini Curtis Grant. Hello. But he has you this remember. Jamaican kind of feel. Does he well, have this well, Jamaican well, kind of... Well, yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So he took <laughs> Jamaican dance hall and owned it as his own, right? And he, that's, that's what he did. A lot, right, a lot of Trinidadians did that. Mm-hmm. Right, but what I'm saying is that uh-huh. ad, I don't know who wrote the ad. I wish I could find out who wrote yeah. the ad. Maybe we could ask Bieber. Yeah. Who wrote the ad and who, who could do something? Dial for my number. Come here, right. Bieber. Exactly. That, from then on, that, that style of rapping, singing, beat yes. is what yes. started. And you're saying yeah, it started to happen before that. I think right. when that ad came out, it became mainstream. That this yeah. is what Trinidadians were li- liking and listening to, and this is what soca artists had to start emulating if yeah. they were to if they were to, to survive. But they did you see the thing about soca? Soca music music don't need to survive. Mm-hmm. Once you have carnival, you have soca music. You understand the same. Now we, we are in a situation where there's one big soca artist. 
There's one big carnival band, and that's carnival. There's Marshall mm -hmm. Montano and there's Drive. And that's I mean you could say you could you could you could scream and shout at me and say I talk it shit. But I'm telling you right now, as it stands, there is a, a virtual monopoly on carnival when it comes to music and it comes to um <laughs> it, it comes to uh, um What's called uh, buying? Gotta... And do you know? And do you know? And do you know why that is? Do you know why that is, Ian? I'll tell you why. Huh? With respect, with respect to Soka, back in the late nineteen eighties, mm -hmm. Shadow had a song called "Ease the Tension." I'm sure you've heard of it. Mm -hmm. The first, from the first verse, he asks, "What's wrong with the Soka controllers?" Because there were, uh, there were scene forces. We knew, we knew who the people who had an independent streak as a, as a musician, as an artist. You would be catching your royal skin to actually get any sort of airplay. And there was talk of a mafia taking place that they would deliberately shut down anyone who decided to go against the machine, the mafia machine. And there were a lot of Californians who were talking about it. Shadow was singing about it. Even, even, um, the, some of the old guard Calisonians, like crazy, they were talking about it as well. It was one of the unspoken things that the, 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 the people, they were, they, were, they were saying it in, in, in hushed tones. I can recall, I recall a certain radio DJ who had to play particular songs, mm -hmm. who had no other choice but to mm -hmm. play particular soca songs because this, the owner of that particular radio station was the manager yeah. and you had to play and you had to play it because if you didn't, what you're going to do, you're going to risk losing your job. You can't do that. Yeah. So you yeah. had to go ahead and, and do it. So to a certain extent, that was the case, but people did not want to talk about it because they just did not want to upset the status quo. Now, as it, as it stands right now, you're right. We do have, one, only one. We're, there are numerous soca stars out there, but there's only one in the firmament, in the, in, the, in the firmament of the galaxy, that he is so huge. He he has his own orbit. Yeah. And yeah. and these and these singers have no other choice but to gravitate towards, well, not necessarily gravitate towards him, but they 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 really don't have much of a say in the matter. He still commands. Yeah. That kind of, and that is a difference between no and then, because yeah. then we were spoiled for choice. Again, as a teenager growing up in the 80s, we had numerous, you had a vast array of Calypsonians and soca singers, and they had their crowd, they had their audience, they had the people, and nobody yeah. had a problem with that. Nobody had a problem with that. The thing about yeah. it is, and I always say this, and this is, this is, Maybe this is this applies to to world music. I'm talking about world music, not not just not just North American music or European music, or but I'm I'm referring to every every genre of music worldwide. So that in the 1980s, you still have people singing stuff. There was an article that came out. I think it was in the Atlantic um, magazine, the online edition, that you have right now the vast majority of listeners of 80s music happen to be teenagers, today's teenagers. They're yeah. listening to music from the 1970s. These are American teenagers. They're not necessarily listening to Ariana Grande. They're not necessarily listening to Post Malone, although you would have people who would be listening to that. They're not. You're not going to have people listening to Nicki Minaj or Lizzo or, 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 the next, or Harry Styles or anybody like that. That's not happening. Yeah. But they are listening to music by the police, they're listening to music by Bandana. They're listening to music by the Eagles, even. And they're from mm. the 1970s. Mm. So, and, 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 and what I find interesting as well is that when you get people moving in a fet, if you were to play a bunch of stuff from the 1980s, a bunch of soca stuff, people are still going to be grooving to it. Yeah. They're still going to be grooving to it. And people can recall what was the Road March, for example, from, from 1986, which is... David Rudder's Bahia Girl, or, or Duke Sunder from 1987. They can recall that, but how many of us can say, all right, so what was the road march for 2007? Does anybody know? What was the road march for 2008? Does anybody know? 
Exactly. <clears throat> they can't recall because they, these songs don't have any kind of staying power. Yeah. You, you're not going to listen. You are not going to, you're not going to listen to a song. Incidentally, the, the road march for 2007 was Jumbi mm. by Marshall Montano. Just, just to, just to clarify. And I think I'm trying to figure out what was the road march, but Fan Lions won that year if memory serves me right in 2008. Anyway, that's beside the point. But you don't find people gravitating towards those songs. But yeah. if you were to play Explainers Lorraine from 1982, everything just 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 falls away, and they yeah. will listen to that. So, yeah. me, and I don't know where, I don't know where, I don't know where, I don't know where we went wrong. But the, again, we could go back to it. We're going back to a time when, when back in those days, you had at least one or two songwriters coming up with a song, and now it's. It's, it's, you have 15 to 20 songwriters working on a, on a, on a, on a two and a half minute track. It's ludicrous. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. So now, so that's, that's the problem. That's the problem that I, <clears throat> pardon me. That's the problem that I have with, 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 with what passes for music these days. It's not, it's not just soca. It's pop music as well. It's international yeah. pop music and, and, yeah. and, and, and what yeah. have you. So that when you find a song, like the song I told you about last week, when you hear it, it's, it sounds so fresh and so alive. And you, mm. you're thinking, how come this song hasn't gone mainstream? Yeah. Because it, it, it just hasn't. And you have to, because it does not have the kind of, of, of it doesn't have the, the, the promotional machine to back them up, like, a, like yeah. an Ariana Grande would, or, 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 or even a Lady Gaga. And Lady Gaga's yeah. music, isn't that bad? Lady Gaga's music is quite well. It's quite good, actually. But yeah. again, there we are. There's there's our situation. That's our situation. Yeah, I um, I always say that technology technology has enabled us to do some great things, but at the same time, it has allowed us to become lazy. Yes, you know, it, I agree with that. You know. I I I reached a stage where I just got sick of hearing uh, X featuring Y featuring Z, and I'm like, so you can't you can't carry this song by yourself. You need to bring yeah P Diddy or Jay Z or whoever, you know. Yeah. And and half the yeah. time they just they just you know making one with noise on the background, and you're just doing that so that you you know you could get the marketing out of it it's it now right. mind you there have been a lot of songs featuring xyz who which sound good don't get me wrong you know but it it, it reached a stage where everybody was just that was the thing now everybody was just doing it and here we have x featuring y and z with so and so and i remember yeah. our good friend ronald was telling me once that when um uh, when this girl came out, um, oh, I just had it in my brain. Um, Amy Winehouse, when Amy yeah. Winehouse came out, um, right? Okay, so amazing <laughs> talent. I don't think about it. I saw something by our good friend. I got it. I saw it today from Paula Kuran, who yes. said, "Stop doing." Uh, 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 eep, uh, 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 and I fell that. In, I fell that in the chest because I do <laughs> yeah. a lot of that. I do a lot of that. So, so I'm gonna try. I know it, 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 it's difficult because I'm not trained. I'm not a trained person at all. So I am. I am very. I'm very very difficult to. So I'm gonna pause. Maybe I should just try that pause story. Well, the important difficult. thing to do is. Yeah, the pause, but just make sure that the pauses are not pregnant because the next thing you know, you have to give birth to ennui. And you don't want that. Which is why the pause just now is to try to remember Paolo's but sometimes, pa but sometimes they pause for effect as opposed to cause and effect, you see? Yeah. Now I forgot what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, Amy Winehouse, the band. Yes, you're saying what you're talking about Amy Winehouse, right? Amy Winehouse's band yes. had a uh, quirk. The quirk was that they never used, they don't use computers, or at least that's what Ronald told me. They don't use computers. They use tape decks to mix okay. their music, 
Cool. Old school, real, yeah. magnetic tea. Right. Splice yeah. cut, da 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 da. And I, I, I was just like, why? What, why, why? And now I understand why, because they were looking for a certain kind of sound. And when you listen to Amy Winehouse on the first album, there is Back a certain... Black. Yeah, there's a certain... A certain really, element of, 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 of sonic integrity. Texture. Is that there's a texture to it that is, mm-hmm. that is very, you know, retro, but not. But that was, that, was a main, that was a main goal for it to sound retro. Yeah, you know? Correct. So I, I, think, I think there is a way of using the old to do something new. And there's also a way of taking the new and making it sound old. Um, let's say arm again. This latest Disney series and or the Star Wars series, uh, the, the reviewers, one of the reviewers commented and said, they put some kind of grain on this film to make it look like the 1970s, like it was in 1970. Mm. And I don't agree with that. I don't really think that that's a good idea. Because oh, that reminds me. Mm-hmm. That reminds me. Uh, when they were filming, though I'm, and I'm guilty of it, when they were filming Fiddler on the Roof, what they did, what, what, what the director Norman Jewison did to make the film look as if it was straight out of the, of the early 1900s, of the early 1910s, what they did was that they took a stocking, a woman's stocking, and they put it over the lens to give it that kind of grainy feel. So they used a, they, they it came up with a low tech solution for what was considered high tech back then. And I think it, they also did it. They also did it with the Godfather. That same sort of approach. But yes, I I I, I understand. I understand we 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 are going with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, and I'm again, once again, I'm guilty of it. So now we have to be conscious of, of what we say, and now we have to be very careful in terms of how we structure our sentences. Mm-hmm. So, I believe that the more cognizant we are of it, the more we'll be sounding competent linguistically competent and not like a bunch of dunderheads feeling our way around metaphorically in the dark that kind of thing so there's that and uh, we know that so we don't sound like zombies starving for brains this is me doing my jack sparrow impersonation and he's looking up at me. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, tell me too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, what is it about Andor? Tell me about Andor. I've never, I haven't seen the series. I, is it I, any good? I, no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. It, it's not. It's no. It, it's a pilot stealing horse shit. No. Well, yes. My tastes are different from other people's tastes, so I, I'm not going to tell people not to watch I'm this not, thing. I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't know. No, I, I have no I, idea. I, I just, I, I, I say the high seas. I got a copy of one of the first episode. I Somebody had argued. Somebody had um, argued, as you were talking about Andor, there's another series that's making the rounds and garnering a lot of buzz. Rings of Power. And people are saying that it's boring, that it's a snooze fest and what have you. And I thought to myself, and I thought to myself, you have writers, you you supposedly have competent writers, award-winning writers, but what you do not have is the very essence of the Lord of the Rings. That is to say, you do not have the essence of a Tolkien. You do not have someone who is so well-versed in... It is. It is. It is damn near impossible. All right. So to, let's let's put it cool. let's put it into perspective, please. For, for the industry of advertising, let's let's okay. let's 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 bring it into into something that 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 is a little bit more on topic. And I'm not I'm not going to go off topic with this because I think it's important. But um, the thing is, is that. You remember when we relaunched Green Sounds? I do. Right. Green, so explain to the people what Green Sounds is. 
Green Sands is a type of shandy. That is to say, beer mixed with soda pop. I can't think of any other way to describe it. Mm. So if you have, so, so if you have like, say, a sorrel shandy, that would be beer flavored with sorrel juice or in this case, lime juice flavored with beer, which is they call, which is a, which is a sort of shandy, which is a green sands. So long before you had your regular shandy, you had green sands, which made its debut back in the early 1980s, 1982, if memory serves me right. Mm -hmm. And for about, for the vast majority of the 80s, it was, it was a popular drink. And yeah. then by the late 1980s, it... Can you remember the, first, the, the tagline in the 80s? What was the tagline? Wow. That's a good question. Okay. So the first tagline was Green Sands, a flavor all its own. Mm -hmm. And then back in 1988, there were, it was called the one and only Green Sands. Mm -hmm. And like I said, by 1989, for some reason or the other, they discontinued manufacturing Green Sands. Yeah. It was Dutch, wasn't it? It's a Dutch... It, 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 Dutch product? Could have been, it could have been a Dutch product. I'm not 100% certain if it was a Dutch product, but I, I think it was, yeah, probably, it was probably made under the aegis of Heineken, but that is subject to correction. So, yeah, back in, it wasn't until like about 2007 that there was the Green Sands Renaissance. And, they basically uh, brought back yeah. the whole thing they did. as is in the real bottle, in the everything, the same form and everything, right? Go now, the reason, the reason I bring this up is because there was this feeling that this product would be nostalgic enough for it, that people would buy it to be nostalgic of it. So before, in the old days, in the 80s, Green Sands had this kind of... Didn't Green Sands have this ad with the girl in a bikini? Was it a girl in a yeah. bikini? Right. It, had, it had two girls and two guys on the beach. Right. It was very sexy. It was a sexy yeah. thing. And I remember that. And when the agency took it now to relaunch it, they made it the most unsexiest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> By just saying, Green Sands is back. So it was like, oh, yeah, Green Sands is back. Oh, yeah, whatever. Why? <laughs> well, because we love Green Sands in the 80s. Yeah, but that was like in the 80s. We now in that was in the 80s. It's now 2007. So, so why? So why even yeah. And then I think it was about, it took about a year. And then it was off the shelves again. It disappeared. It was off the shelf. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was on the shelves by 2007. I think by 2010, 2011, uh, there was no more green sands. Right. So the the point I'm making with this is that marketing people low when when we talk about low hanging fruit, marketing people like to use nostalgia, and they're using a lot of nostalgia in 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 the turn of the millennium. There was a huge attempt to use nostalgia, you know, like things that you remembered in the 80s and the 70s at the turn of the of the 40s, what we call the 40s. You know, that, that's, that's bring that, that that's a Brit, that's a British yes. term. I prefer to call it in the 2000s and leave it at that. Yeah, but okay. No and then and then you, and you. then you had then you had let's put stag in the old bottle, and then you yeah. had mm -hmm. well, well, there was some there was something else that was that. They tried to bring back. Um, what did they try to bring back? Because everybody was on this nostalgic kick. And I thought, here's something interesting, right? If you have a product that is so good, that is really iconic, yeah. why even change it? Yeah. Why even bother to change it? Because it is something you do not mess with the, if it's like again, this depends on how popular the brand is. Yeah. Since 1867, we can talk about the Tabasco sauce bottle. That yeah. bottle, the label itself, the label in the bottle has virtually remained unchanged in the last yeah. 155 years. Yeah. And people still use it. And it's, and it's still very popular. 
and we're talking about a company that churns out hundreds of millions of liters of this of this famous sauce. The same yeah. can be said of Angostura, which incidentally, Angostura bitters, which incidentally, in 2024, will be celebrating its 200th anniversary. Mm. The brand itself, the bitters. And I'm thinking, I hope, I hope that the folks at Angostura have the common sense and the foresight to come up with a very special sort of, 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 because the bottle itself is pretty much unchanged. In the last yeah. 200 years, I could be wrong. The bottle itself yeah. is pretty much a change. It's, it still has a trademark, yellow cap, and everything. But it's, yeah. a, but it's an iconic product. And yeah. it, it, it really doesn't need any sort of, of, of major changes. Because yeah. again, based on the popularity of the product, based on the, on, the, on, the, on the recognition, it is the flagship brand. I mean, yeah. there would be no Angostura if it were not for Angostura Bitters. Yeah. And there's a whole yeah. history behind Angostura Bitters, as you know. Yeah. There's a whole history behind that. Yeah. The, the thing is, is that Angostura has always been team. You know, they, their tours, you go and you find out more about Angostura, but as if you want to. Angostura, the, the people have always been team that they understand their history. And I know this because over the years, they, they, have, they, they have tried to mean, they, they, it's in their DNA to, to make sure that the history is, is maintained. So I don't think they have a problem there. Is whether the agency gonna fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because the agency is probably gonna present some bullshit, right? To try to make it sound like we blend in all with you or some shit. And it's going to be like, I'm going to be like, you're going to be like, you know, and I'm pretty sure the honest two people are just gonna cross their arms and look at them like, what the fuck? Because there are there are people in there. Yes, they've had their problems. Yes, there, there have been issues. Yes, Angostura has you know has been on shaky ground. It's still kind of on shaky ground because the parent company they're part of. You know, the government had to take over running of the place. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot of there's a lot of bad things that have happened over the last decade or so. You know, even. Even more than that, even 15 years. The thing is, though, is that Angostura has consistently maintained that this is the brand of Angostura bitters. But that is not because local Angostura bitters, um, um, it, it is it's in charge of that. They have a lot of international offices that also sell huge amounts of this stuff to, to this United States, to the to Europe and whatever. So they they're not gonna just say, well hey, yeah, you wanna change the bottle to some kind of multicolored green color? No problem, man. Let's do that. Yeah man. You wanna you wanna make the, the bottle like a jolita? Hey, no problem, we could do that. Whatever shit the agency come up with and present to the Malas people. They're not just gonna say yeah they're gonna do that. Which is a good thing. I think agencies get ex uh, there's so much you could probably do with this and da 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 da. And let's think out of the box. And all. No, no, no. There are a lot of things embedded in this product. That is, you're right. It's how many years? 200 and how many years? 200 years. 1824. By 2024, it'll be so. And, uh, and next year, next year is the 100th anniversary of Quicks. Ah, there's the next one. Because that same agency will do the same shit. Let's let's <laughs> do one zero zero with clicks in it. Voila! <laughs> you know, it's, when, it, it here's, the thing, here's the thing, yeah. When Oreo, when Oreo had their 100th anniversary back in 2012, because the Oreo cookie itself has been around since 1912. So when they had their uh, 100th anniversary in 2012, what they did was they kind of married the cookie itself with some of the more, shall we say, uplifting moments of humanity, like, for example, the Apollo moon landing. When they had the Apollo moon landing in 1969, they showed you the, the one half of the cookie looking like the surface of the moon, that sort of thing. That is what I'm talking about. But the brand itself, the cookie itself, when you look at the cookie, the cookie that you see today 
the outward appearance of the cookie is the same cookie mm-hmm. that you could have purchased back in, in, in 1912. And was it called Hydrox? Was it called uh, that was Hydrox? A, that was a totally that was a totally different brand though. Oh, that's a different brand. Okay. That's a totally different brand. But Oreo itself, the, the essential make of the cookie is the same. Now that changes when you have promotional tie-ins, like say you're doing something featuring a superhero or you want to put in a special flavor. And now of course Oreo comes in all sorts of different flavors. Yeah. Uh, depending on your on your taste, whether it's chocolate, dark chocolate, pumpkin spice, vanilla, whatever. Yeah. Double stuff, whatever it is. But the essential brand itself, the cookie, which is the cookie, not necessarily the packaging, but the cookie is removed and changed. When the agency had decided to, to, well, I guess, I guess not necessarily the agency, but when the company behind Crips decided to change the, the cookie, it's not the cookie, but the business, the cracker itself, the Crips cracker. It was an iconic, people started complaining. They went on the Facebook page and they said, well, what have you done? It's, it's not as, it's, it's, it's not as, as, as hefty as before. It, it's yeah. not as, it, it just lacks something. It, 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 it's it's now it, it's it's flavorless almost yeah. because and they, they claim that they, they claim they never changed the formula, but they did. They did change the they formula. Did. I thought yeah. so. They did. Well, there's a host of story behind it. One of them is they changed my they changed the whole manufacturing line. They yeah. updated the line of the machinery. So maybe the, the okay. So as somebody pointed out. You can you can take all the same ingredients exactly the same way, and your cake and your grandmother's cake will taste differently. You may get it close, but it'll never be the same. Right. It'll never be the same, right? You will know the difference. Other people may not know the difference. But the point is, is how you put these the ingredients back together. You see. But I mean, what is what is coming back to is the whole nostalgia aspect of this idea of well, Crix is a uh, is you know the Crix tin, and 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 you 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 you, huh, you, you buy my, my dad was saying you could pay a shilling and get like a hundred of them, you know that mm-hmm. kind of thing. You know, the, the thing about it is is that right now my Devan is eating Crix and cheese. That's all he wants to eat for dinner. You know, yeah. but the thing is, is the nostalgia aspect of it. If you see what well, the crick is a hundred years, you know, let's 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 the agency is probably going to present something about you know, you remember when you used to wear bell bottom pants and eat in a cricks with your big hair full. You know, that's the kind of you know thinking that you're going to see. And if you use that idea, I will come and I will kill you. <laughs> no, you would. Come on. Well, I do not money. That idea is a, yes. great, a great idea, right? It you is. Know, the, uh, with the cricks as the uh, as the um as the the hair yeah, cool, you know. Yeah. Cricks is in everywhere. Yeah. Everybody's part of everybody's lives. You know, the the big ring earrings. You know, they were the they were the um what you call it the platform shoes. You know, whatever you want to call it. That is cricks. You know. Mm-hmm. Cricks is even in drag, and we talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was a different brand of of of, of crackers, huh? Remember that? Yeah. It's a different brand of crackers. But yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Wait yeah. a minute. No. That's true. You're right. Because yes. 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 Cricks was in oh, drag. God. drag. Right. Yeah. Cricks in drag. Yes. I now remember. Oh, my so God. So if they, if they bring that back, I, I say, well, why not? It was just like when we, we brought back the Supergen ad just for that one time. And Could we went they crazy. Not? Everybody, everybody here's something, liked here's that, something you know? amazing. Here's something amazing. If if the folks at Bermudez, and I'm not I'm not taking them to task, I'm not berating them or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But a great way to start to gain traction is to see if you can dig deep into your archives. Because I am sure that you would have archives about you know the agency not going to do that, Jared. Oh, no... But anyway, go on, go on, go on. It's a pity. It's a pity if they don't. But it's a pity if they don't, because they've had they've they've, they've look, 
you know, this is the thing that, that really bugs me, is that the difference between us and the folks and the folks from overseas is that they care about their advertising history. There's an advertising museum where they talk mm-hmm. about the ads, where they talk about how far they've come as a product, as mm-hmm. a brand. They talk about the evolution of that particular, of said brand. All of this they talk about, all of this they highlight, all of this they show to the viewing public because there is a market for it because people are genuinely interested in the history of that particular brand. They want to know how it came to be. Mm -hmm. And my feeling is that 2023 is going to come and go and nothing is going to be done. They're just going to have happy 100th anniversary and that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be yeah. a year long celebration of things, Cricks. Yeah. It's not going to be like that. And I, and, yeah. and that, and that is a pity because I think one of the most, arguably the most Trimbegonian brand there is out there is Cricks. Yeah. Probably next to Angostura. Because Cricks yeah. is just exactly. as iconic. Cricks, Angostura, and we have one more thing. Cricks, Angostura, and, uh, well, not Pan, because Pan is the other thing, but, um, yeah, but product. Pan is a, Pan product. is a, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's another product. There's another product. I'm just doing cricks. And, uh, and, uh, well, carrot beer. Beer. Carrot beer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Carrot beer. So, carrot beer and carrot beer. Carrot and stag. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. And, and, anyway, and if members, yeah. So, what, what I was saying is, is that coming back to the, the, the whole rings of power and uh, steam. Is that a lot of a lot of a lot of what is going on now is an attempt to try to mend or bury you into you know buying into this product. Remember mm-hmm. when we used to do this? Well, we have it here again. Look, so one of the things that Rings of Power is trying to do heavy on, and maybe you know House of the Dragon is doing it as well, is you remember this. You know when we, we we had this great time when we saw this the first time. Look at here in the background. You know, it's like it's a kind of beat. It's a kind of beat to make you want to watch it. So you sometimes can live, it, you live these good moments. That sometimes, you have sometimes it works. Sometimes it works to great effect, and in other cases, it's not. It, it doesn't work right. at all. Right. So the the thing is, Andor is a character from Rogue One. Which is the Star Wars standalone new movie, right? Right. Uh, incidentally, that was written and produced by one of the two brothers that are responsible for Photoshop. And when I tell my students that in class, that they all sh- they all look at me with blank stares. I say, "You all don't know Thomas and Thomas Noll and uh, was his brother, the other Noll. I can't remember his name now." Uh, they they were responsible for Photoshop. Photoshop now, which is now a verb. You Photoshop this and you Photoshop that and you Photoshop all right. the shit all over the place. They, yeah. they, 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 they revolutionized how image, image manipulation worked for advertising. Now you could have Kardashians and now you could have Rihanna looking perfect and all these people looking perfect because of Photoshop. These, uh-huh. This guy, you know, he worked on it, worked to the special effects on a lot of uh, Lucasfilm movies. And he went and he, he wrote and he pitched this idea for Rogue One. And Andor is a character in there, you know, just to, you know, just not to get into that. And it, everybody's like, yeah, but nobody really knows this character is not really important to the whole mythos, you know. And then when you watch, you start watching the TV series, you, you're like, Rogue One had this kind of attempt to try to make it feel like it was in the time period because it happened just before the original Star Wars, right? The 1977 yeah. one. So everything kind of looks dingy and grungy and, and well retro old school. And they right. have a word for it, they call it retro futurism, where you know it's 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 retro, but it's what what what, what people thought the future would be if it looked like that, you know? So you can't have iPads and you can't have this and you can't have that, you know, touch screens and so on. So, but you still have to make it look contemporary in a way. This is what the TV series is trying to do. It's trying to 
make you feel that kind of old retro style, but in a new way. It's very, very subtle. It's a member berry, but in a stylistic way. Like like you were saying, you know, putting the, the thing over the lens for a fiddle on the roof is the same right. thing. You process it through a computer to make it look grainy like a shot. But everything, but everything is more, but everything is so high tech and it's not, it's not like you need to use a little Right. So, so you, you kind of feel like you're being taken for a ride. You know, it's like, a, you know, you know, this is not really, you know, so it's you, you kind of see it. Like, it's not transparent. You so know? Can, forgive me for interrupting, but does it sound, does it sound to you like, like they're, they're, la- they're lacking some kind of artistic integrity to this? To I wouldn't say they're this. lacking artistic integrity. I think, I think they're trying too hard. They're trying too hard to make it, okay. you know, to make it less to make it less like the other shoes that are out there, which is fine, but it's just like bringing back green sounds. You know, initially you'd be like, oh yeah, this is so cool, and then you realize there's no actual substance to this. But stay true. I think the the fault may not necessarily lie with the the marketing people behind the brand itself, not necessarily. No, no, not in this case, no. But probably with the manufacturers of the brand and that they did not stay true to the original product and what made the product deep. Because I can remember when I was a kid, I must have been about 13 or 14 when I helped myself to a couple of bottles of green sands. And I loved how it tasted. And it was, the taste itself had a richer, more full-bodied kind of flavor as opposed to the 2007 green sands which had a sort of a light kind of fruity taste, mm-hmm. lemony sort of taste, but it really didn't have the kind of, 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 it was like, it was like all this time you've been going out with Monica Bellucci and you end up mm-hmm. with a Kim Kardashian mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you just feel cheated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you think, Oh my God, you're not real. Yeah, but advertising, advertising is is going out with the hot Thai woman, and she takes off the wig and all the makeup and everything. It turns out to be a boy. <laughs> oh no, I can go one better. I can go one better. Uh, a beautiful, a beautiful, a beautiful. There's a beautiful story uh, based on, on 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 what I saw in one of the earlier Flintstones episodes, where Dino is falling is fallen in love with a female dinosaur type creature just like just like himself now the creature's name is sassy which is a, which is obviously a a, a, a dig at lassie and yeah. sassy is this super sort of pet dinosaur pet she looks really gorgeous and everything and and dino really is crazy about sassy right dino mm-hmm. just wants to be with sassy 24 7. so he goes to pay sassy a visit backstage and he realizes how fake sassy really is the eyelashes, the wig, everything is just not her. When mm-hmm. she when she starts to remove the makeup, Sassy looks like this really decrepit looking creature. And Dino is would have none of it. Dino runs straight back to Fred at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. But that that's pretty much it. That's pretty mm-hmm. much it. You feel you know, he, he he so he just said, Wow, I just dodged a bullet there. But that's the kind of thing with, with respect to advertising. It's 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 a matter of of, of 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 staying true to your particular brand of having again that degree of authenticity. You might yeah. even want to change the packaging if you want to, but do yeah. not change the essential, the essential soul of it. What made it great in the first place? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I a beautiful. Um, let me give another beautiful uh-huh. example before you, before you go. A beautiful example of this is Toddy. Toddy was at one point a hot chocolatey sort of drink mix that was very popular, um, made by Nestle in the 1970s. It was very popular in mm-hmm. Trinidad, and the taste was was just it was just out of this world. It was so good, and it it it, it made a comeback. I think back in the 90s, but except this time it was made in Venezuela. But the product itself was pretty much the same. It still the taste was the same, and uh, and if you have something like that. If you can go with something like that, 
you, you're not gonna you're not gonna lose you're not gonna lose your your your, your fans. You're not gonna lose your consumers. Mm-hmm. Stay mm-hmm. true to, to straight. Stay true to who you are. Stay true to to what it is that, that, that you're doing. If it ain't mm-hmm. broke, don't try to fix it. Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If it ain't broke, mm-hmm. don't try to fix it. Which brings me to rings of which brings me to rings of power. Okay. Right. So rings of power stands in its own kind of universe. If you think Star Wars fans are rabid and <laughs> you tell me. warlike, Tolkien fans do not like you messing with their stuff. This Tolkien fans are around for almost a hundred and something years. You know what I mean? It's like it, it, this is yeah. this is long, long in the tooth kind of thing. It's it's Tolkien is the is the is the grandfather, granddaddy of all modern fantasy, right? And here we have uh, an attempt to try to tell a story that is inside of the universe, but not really related in any way to it. Yeah. Now, I am not a token scholar by any stretch of the imagination. But bona fide token scholars are saying, what the fuck is this shit, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get this shit from, Charles? Because there are there there there's 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 a huge disconnect. Because right. apparently the, the story is is that Amazon went to the Tolkien uh, Foundation. Uh, is it the Tolkien Foundation? What is it called? The you Tolkien Trust. Call it that. You no, call it's a that, trust. Yeah. It's called a token trust. Token trust. Okay, cool. The, the family trust. Uh, because right now it's not run. Christopher Tolkien has died, and he was a oh son. So yeah, he died a long time ago. Really, the guy was he was just as old as his dad. You know, he was that old. All right. And, All right. and he left it with the family, and the family are kind of these loose. You know, when you leave things to family, they kind of like. You know, not everybody on the same page. It's like, a, it's like you leave the house to fight people in your family and one person wants to sell it and the other one wants to flatten it and the other one wants to live in it. It's a bit of a, a mess. So nobody does anything with the house. It just kind of stays there, right? And what happened was Jeff Bezos went to the token trust or the family or whatever and said, I want to make a Lord of the Rings TV series Based on the books, and <laughs> they told him, oh, "No." <laughs> <laughs> so he came back and again, and he said, "Okay, well, look, if I can't make a movie out of the three books, the the three major Lord of the Ring books, can I make them out of the appendices?" I know, like, eh, oh, I know. no, <laughs> so no. So he went back again, and he said, "Wait, wait, wait." What about this book called the Simmer, Simmerian? I, I can never pronounce it. Simmerian. Which Simmerian, is, I think it's called. This is basically Tolkien's notes, which is nothing more than a collection of ideas that he was just throwing together when he was writing Lord of the Rings. You know, background things and, you know, characters right. and maybe this one. So there's nothing really set in stone. There's certainly no dialogue. There's certainly no you know, set pieces. It's just ideas. It's just like, um, well, the elves come in from Numenor, and Numenor is this kind of place that does this, that, 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 that. And that's it. It's, it's a very general. You don't read it like a novel. You kind of read it as a, you know, this is kind of interesting to know trivia about, you know, Lord of the Rings. And you said, well, can I, can I make this into a series? And they went, uh, no. <laughs> we want your money anyway, so you can use elves, dwarves, halflings, not hobbits, halflings, and the um, the, the geography. You can use the geography, but you can't talk about anything that happens in Lord of the Rings or the similar area. So, <laughs> So what had to happen was they had to go and create a new thing. But you see, the problem is they were already running on the idea that 
they could they could they could start on the, the um what to call it the platform of nostalgia. Hey, you remember Lord of the Rings and how good it was? Well, we have this and it's going to be great. But they didn't have anything to work with. So the, the writers had to sit down and actually write like Tolkien. And you cannot write like Tolkien. No one exactly. Can. And this is Tolkien where the problem Tolkien. starts. Because they have the characters, they have these vague ideas of what's in the Similarian that right. they're allowed to use. But they can't talk about things. In other words, Galadriel is the most glaring example. Galadriel, you know, is a thousand years old by the time this, this TV series starts, right? Galadriel is acting yeah. like a 25-year-old, you know, um, cuckold woman. And, you know, she was just made of my men left, right, and center. But that's not Galadriel's character. And that's not, excuse me, how she ends up in Lord of the Rings. In Lord of the Rings, She's a stateswoman who is who has never been this kind of warrior princess kind of person. You, you see, let's get my God. sword and cut people down, kind of stuff. That's not the character. And 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 real token fans are like, we don't think that we really like this. And now we're in the whole thing of oh, they don't like black elves. I mean, they don't like black dwarves. What? No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about now. I sat down and watched the first two episodes, and the the the, the 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 series is beautiful. It's gorgeous. It looks great, but just like advertising, you look at this thing and you take an in by it. But then you start to read the headline, and it goes, "Oh, you want a sale? Here, yeah, look at sale." And that, <laughs> you see, you see this beautiful visual of this really hot-looking woman. You know, on the beach or something with green signs, and the headline is, "All oh, no, I green signs, take green signs. What? Ironically <laughs> enough, ironically <laughs> enough, the tagline for green signs back in 2007 was, everybody loves an original. Right. But you, that was but you and I, I but you and I both know, you and I both know, if we're being honest with ourselves, it wasn't anything like the original. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is the point. And that is exactly. the point. Exactly. And this is the whole problem with Rings of Power, with 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 any Star Wars property now. Yeah. With any, yeah. I, you know, it's 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 an attempt to to you know. I see Elizabeth Banks who did, who did uh, the Charlie's Angels reboot says, you know, right. she never tried to market it to just to 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 feminists, and and that's an outright lie. But the thing about it is, it wasn't just that they were trying to they were trying to run a nostalgia campaign, as you remember. It was, mon it was, it was monumentally bad. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. You remember Charlie's bad. Angels? Well, this is Charlie's Angels for for the new generation, and, right. and the new generation went. We don't know what this is. Please go away. <laughs> please, please leave. <laughs> Can you, know, you know, please leave without kicking? What us? I would like to see, what I would like to see more and more is people taking chances, experimenting with new things. Let us Absolutely. come up with new stories. Let us Absolutely. not go back to what has been, quote-unquote, tried and tested and true. Let us yeah. not go back to Star Trek. Let us not go back to Star Wars. Let's not go back to Lord of the Rings. Let's yeah. not even go to Absolutely. Game of Thrones. Come yeah. up with something that has been... Now, which is why I, I, I always... Now, Jordan Peele might not be, I mean, his last couple of movies were, for me, they didn't exactly knock it out of the, he didn't exactly knock it out of the park, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. But at least he had the unmitigated temerity to, to try something new. Yeah. And we need, not as creatives, whether you work in movies, whether you work in advertising, it doesn't matter. It helps tremendously to take risks and to see how far you can go. If you fail, you fail. Yeah. That's part for the course. And I think yeah. a lot of us, a lot of us in the industry right now 
are afraid of monumentally failing if we decide yeah, to well, go. Yeah, we can't afford to, John. We, we live on a knife's edge now. After the 2008 crash, people have been very, very, very reticent to try new things because the investment is just too, it's just too much. It's so just then, too much. So then if that's the case, so if that's the case, then there should be, there should be, there needs to be a renaissance of some sort. There will be. And, and, there will be, there and, will be. And the thing about it is that prior to a renaissance, there is always that, prior to the rebirth, you are always going to have the pain and you're always going to have the anguish and you're always going to have the agony. And I think that is what we are going through right now. There's a lot of, not literal, well, I mean, there is, yes, but in terms of, of the creative industry, there is a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of pain. There's yeah. a lot of agony and a lot of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. And the bottom hasn't dropped out yet. But when it does, I expect to see a rebirth of new ideas. And I think that is what we need to have. Because without that, I mean, people were, were, were talking about the death. And the, it's interesting. I remember there was an article in, in Life magazine. This is, now this is at the dawn of the 70s. In the early 1970, they were saying, Hollywood is dead. There are no great movies anymore. Everything has is, is just gone to shit. It's, forget it. We have got to stop. Our, our movies aren't, aren't making money. We're, 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 we're not, we're not, we're, we're always relying on the, on the, on the same old hackneyed ideas. We, we, we don't have any, we, we have nothing. We're, we're bereft of anything. This is before Francis Ford Coppola. This is before Steven Spielberg. Hmm. And this is before directors, you know, directors who would, who would, who would go on to, to, to really have a sort of positive impact on uh on on, on what it what, what it was that they were doing this is before you had all these a uh, john carpenter and so on these mm. this is before all of this before there was a revi before there's this revitalizing of, of uh the same can be said of of, of, of the american sitcom genre in the 1970s yeah. it's gone yeah. it, it, it's, it's dead by the 80s it was declared dead there are no good sitcoms anymore yeah, but but again, by the eighties, you had this again, this this rush of of really quality stuff showing up. So yeah. I think what has to happen now, what has to happen now, ease up on the franchises. Yeah, ease up on ease up on. I mean, James Bond when they had the when they had James Bond license to kill in nineteen eighty nine, we did not see James Bond for six years. Yeah. And everybody, and when Pierce Brosnan turns up with Cold and I, everybody is just, wow, oh my God, Bond is back. Yeah, because again, absent makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah. So what you need to do, we can do one of the two things. We can either come up with original ideas, or we can just let, let the series, let the franchise lie dormant for a while and see what happens after that. Yeah, I agree. And let, I agree. And let the past. And to, and to steal a line from one of your all-time favorite films, let the past die. Kill it if you have. Anyway, but that's not important right now. I just want to mention that um, we had a we had a situation where somebody mentioned to me. She said, "You need to say you need to mention this on the podcast because it's funny as hell." She said she's noticing. A trend now, and I haven't seen it because I don't really watch local TV anymore. Uh, she said, <laughs> Who does? Yeah, but it's... they're literally taking the TikTok ads, you know, the TikTok things that the influencers create, yeah. those TikTok videos, right? And running it on TV during news. <laughs> Holy God. And I, I would love to see this myself. I wish somebody could tape this, show me. And yeah, it's not just, I sure would. It's not just, you know, that they reformatted it to fit the screen or anything. It's just, you know, the, 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 the what do you call it? What I, what I like to call the monolith size rectangle shape of this video in the middle of the screen. 
the big flat screen TV, wide screen TV, and here's this marvelous shape video of a TikTok of, a, of, of somebody doing something, and the TikTok logo is just moving all over your body, and, and, and it's like, buy this product now, la 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 la. la. And I said, that was the second added to running during news. <laughs> I don't freaking believe that. I just don't freaking believe it. I'm sorry. I just do. I do yeah. because I think that's the next logical step. That 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 is what's going to happen. They're going to the, the TV stations and need the money. They say, "Hey, do you want to add on the news? Here's give a give a five thousand dollars. I'll run it for you. Every time it runs, you, you give a five thousand dollars, right?" So uh, shit, I already have the ad on TikTok. I already do that. I pay a man two thousand dollars to do it. I pay you five thousand dollars, so it's like fifteen thousand dollars plus this two plus maybe a little bit yeah. extra. That's twenty thousand dollars. I have an ad on on news. <laughs> Oi. If I think about it, if I think of, if I truly think about it now, I'm gonna have a major headache. So I don't think I want to think about it right now. Anyway, that. But that that that's not important right now. And that's we, not important. That's definitely we'll, not important. We'll, we'll end there. And I think I think um those of you who stay with our long rambling, you know, and we we appreciate we it. We appreciate really, it. You know, thank, thank you. you. Um, this is a shout out to all our friends. Our la and we do apologize for the last episode. I I I got flattened right after that um our taping of the podcast. I slept from Thursday, Friday, Saturday into Sunday. And I I had to get up in between and try to process and edit and do stuff. And I was just say, I don't I just can't do this. And I still have this cough and I still feel kind of weaky, but the the boy and I are all right. We 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 mostly recovered. So this That's good you know I'm very happy to do that. Right. So maybe we will try for sure next week. Jared, you and I could probably meet up. Um, yeah. So I'll let you know how things go. I just cool. I just recovered from this flu, and then once that's done, we'll, we'll do a, a live session. Yeah? Super. Got it. Cool. Well, thank cool. you very much, everyone, for listening. Thank you. And we hope to see you all. We're going to see, hopefully, show our faces again. I know you love that. Uh, oh, yeah, you guys and, and maybe not Daisy the Cat. How's Daisy the Cat? How's she going? Much better. Much, much, okay. much, much better. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very sparkly. All yeah. right. Yep. So, what are we defining? Originality. What? Well, what's that? Originality is doing something that has never been done before. Taking a fresh new look at ideas and concepts. And if you happen to fall flat in your ass doing it, that's just par for the course. But the rewards for originality mm-hmm. is worth it. But that's not important right now. That's not important right now. Thank you very much. Have a great Thank week, you. Well. Catch Every you on week. the flip side. Cue the theme music. Cue the theme music. <laughs>